Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about the economic calendar going into next week. Then we'll get straight into the charts. And then we'll briefly go over my positions going into Tuesday. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this almost every day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. I want to start off by saying I did go into quite a bit of detail on why people think a recession is going to happen in 2023 in my last video. So definitely check that out. Even if you're uninterested in the rest of the video, this section in there I thought was quite good and definitely worth a listen. So check that out. But otherwise, moving over to the economic calendar, remember, Monday is the New Year's holiday, so there's nothing scheduled. The markets will be closed. So be aware of that and enjoy your Monday. Otherwise, we have PMI manufacturing final on Tuesday. Construction speed expected to slow here, minus 0.4%. Again, a good economic indicator. ISM manufacturing index expected to be lower. Job openings also expected to be lower on Wednesday. But we have the big one here, FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern. Definitely interested in seeing what the Fed has to say. Hopefully they give us some indicators on what they've seen on the PCE numbers, potentially some future forecasting for what they plan to do during the February meeting and potential February rate hike. And that will definitely hold some information that will affect the markets going forward. I do generally expect the market to rally at least up until this point, but it might reduce the amount of rally that we see. Definitely something to pay attention to going forward. And then we have initial jobless claims, again, expected to be 225,000. Continuing jobless claims, last time was 1.71 million. And then the trade deficit, expected to narrow here slightly on Thursday as well. And then finally, on Friday, another pretty big one, we have non-farm payrolls, expected to be 180,000. Unemployment rate, 3.7. We see this start to tick up. That potentially could be good for markets. Then factory orders expected to go negative here for November, minus 1%. It was actually positive in October. That would be a fairly decent decline as well. And then average hourly earnings. We do continue to see this number tick down. That should be good for the markets. The Fed definitely wants to see that average hourly earnings increase, declining, if not going flat, just to make sure we don't get that wage price spiral. Otherwise, quite a lot of things on the economic calendar for the first week of January. But the big thing is that FOMC minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern on the 4th. Moving over to the SPX on the monthly view, we did finish the month, so it's worth looking at the monthly close. It actually doesn't tell us that much. It does look kind of negative. And you would expect the next month to be negative as well. Like I mentioned in my short-term video, I think we will see some short-term bullish movement, but I do agree that the month will be negative here. It's worth noting that momentum is cooling here slightly, but we did get back above the 50 RSI in November, and then we came back through that again in December. So the declining RSI here should give you an indicator that we are going to move lower throughout January. That should be your bias. But like I said, I am very short-term bullish on the markets. Looking at the weekly view, you can see here we've had those two dojis throwing lots of pins to the downside. Like I mentioned, I do think this is going to be slightly bullish going into the next week, maybe two weeks. And we do have that FOMC on Wednesday could rally into that and potentially use that as a catalyst if we do get some good news from the Fed. Otherwise, MACD fading here on the weekly. You should expect this to continue similar to what we saw here from the August high started to fade, went all the way to strong red. Even with a couple of pops here, we had that one really strong week where we came back and retested. And I think that's just about what we're in store for here going into the next week, maybe two. Moving over to the NASDAQ, very similar. Momentum is even weaker, did not come up and test the 50 RSI on the monthly close. And obviously this continues to look weak. It seems like we're going to come back in and test this 9,500 level, which is very close to that pre-COVID high which is also the same trend line that we tested here at the COVID lows. It's just later in time, so that trend line is a little bit higher here. Should expect that we come in and test that potentially in one, maybe two more months of downward price action. Moving over to the weekly view, see we do have that really strong pin to the downside on the weekly view. Do expect that retrace for the next week, maybe two weeks. And then I would expect that to continue back into that trend line, take out these lows, and then move pretty fast as we get into that 9,500 area. Moving over here to the Russell, also looks quite weak on the monthly view. Did get below the 50 EMA, 
definitely looks like we're going to come in and test the 1700 level. That's been the level that we tested here in September and October, which did hold. Certainly could hold at that level, but if we do see the NASDAQ sell off like I'm thinking that it will, it could certainly move down to this next level of support closer to that 1500, 1570 zone. And then if we do hit that level, we do have the 144 EMA on the monthly view starting to come up, maybe gets up to 14, 1450, which would be just a little bit lower than that level of support, which is exactly where we tagged here at the COVID lows. Certainly potentially a thing that could happen. We'll have to keep our eye on these levels of support here for the Russell. Moving over here to the Dow, this looks quite a bit stronger. You can see we came in, tested the 50 EMA and then bounced, got above the 9 EMA on the monthly view and did come up and test that 21 EMA. We're also above that next level of support, which has supported the market several times. Question is, what happens now? Are we going to bounce off this level and start to create slightly higher highs here on the Dow? It's certainly possible. You can see momentum is quite strong here to the upside, but can it do that with the rest of the markets looking like they're going to move lower? Certainly a big dependent on Apple being the biggest market in the world and part of all of the major indices. If Apple starts to sell off like it has been, could certainly drag the Dow down. Come back down and retest the 55 EMA just slightly higher, maybe at around 305 or 300. Make a slightly higher low here, potentially. Move higher from there, it's certainly possible. But the Dow does look stronger compared to all of the rest of the markets. You can see even on the monthly chart, we are above the 50 RSI. And if we do come back in and test the 50 RSI and bounce from there, potentially this does look quite a bit stronger and could go higher. Moving over to Apple, just to show you what I was talking about here, you can see this looks very weak. We had divergence here pretty clearly. We had momentum building to the upside. RSI was flat and started to fail here. And we're through the 50 level now. You should expect that this is going to continue. Momentum is still picking up to the downside. Certainly seems like we're going to come in and test the 55 EMA on the monthly view, which is currently sitting at 103.60. That would be quite a bit of a decline here for Apple. If we do come into that level, that seems like a solid level of support. That's about $30 lower than we are right now. So another 30% down on Apple. So another 30% down on Apple will certainly drag down all the major indices even if the Dow looks really strong right now. The only one that might maybe survive would be the Russell, just because the Apple is not such a large part of the Russell. Moving over to IYT on the monthly view, looks quite weak. We have that big red bar engulfing the entire month previously. Seems like we're going to move lower here, get below those pre-COVID highs. Definitely keep an eye on transportation. This tends to lead the markets at least a little bit. You can see here we had this double top from May all the way to January, not making new highs like the rest of the markets did, indicating that we were going to be moving lower. And you can see that on the RSI here as well. Transportation did lead the markets and it's good to see and it's good to know where transportation is going. Certainly could get that slight bounce here from the 55 EMA, which I am expecting early in the month. And then I would expect that to fail going into the second half of January. Moving over to XLP on the monthly view, you can see momentum to the downside is fading here slightly. And we could certainly see that little pop like we're expecting early in the month. But then I would expect this to move down back into that 71, 72 range, which would be at this level of support, potentially down at 70, 70, 50. And I would expect that to hold at that point. I do think that consumer staples are going to be quite strong going into the next year as we see recessionary fears start to pick up. And if we do see corporate earnings start to decline, I think consumer staples is going to be the place to go. And that should hold up fairly well going forward. In terms of RSI, you can see we are ticking down here. But we did test the 50 and come back up. If we come back in, test the 50 and bounce once again, then, then consumer staples should be in good shape. Looking at gold, I do want to mention this here briefly because it has been very strong ever since December of 2015. We've been on a huge rally and that structure continues to hold. We made some highs here in August of 2020, retested that high in March of 22, sold off throughout the year here, came back in, tested that 55, and it looks like we bounced from there. Looks quite strong. Momentum is picking up here to the upside on the monthly view. RSI is through the 50 line, and it does seem like we're going to get back into that overbought condition. So gold, yeah, definitely could go higher. It looks quite strong on the longer term charts. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the S&Ps, you can see that this has been downtrending. We had clear divergence on the highs versus the RSI. You can see RSI was moving down strongly, but we were making new highs on the ratio. And then that did break down here. So we're right at support. So I do think we'll get a slight bounce here on the monthly. 
early in the month, but I do think this is going to continue to the downside. It could potentially break through this. It does look like it seems to be accelerating at least a little bit here. Momentum is picking up as well, and we're starting to get below that 50 line. If you do get the 26 EMA on the monthly through that zero line, that's certainly going to be a big negative. Could get into oversold conditions in the next month, maybe two months, and that'll be interesting to see what happens at that point. You can see we're at similar levels as the COVID lows here going back to March of 2020. So we basically sold off all of that gain on this ratio. And it certainly seems like we're going lower, at least in the short term for the next month, maybe two. Moving over to the SPX divided by the M2 money supply on the monthly close. We did hold right here at this level, which has been support a few times with this level held in June going into July. You could say this was a retest, but it went much lower here, September into October. We also tested it here October of 20 into November of 20. So multiple times this level is held. Certainly seems like we could get a bounce. I do think it will fail ultimately if we do make new lows in the S&Ps, but we see this ratio hold up at this level, currently the 14.5% level. Obviously, it'll vary on your charts, but in the same vicinity here, I would expect that to be a longer term bottom. Come in, double bottom on this chart. Even if we see new lows on the SPX, if we do see this double bottom on the SPX divided by M2. That should give us a nice little lead indicator that we will be bottoming and potentially see some kind of upward price action in the longer term on the monthly charts. Moving over to stocks above their 200-day moving average, you can see we've gone sideways for quite a bit here. Momentum is fading slightly, very similar to what we saw on this down move. We saw momentum fade, got that little pop for a couple of days, and that's kind of what I'm expecting here. Get this little pop, get above the 21, maybe just for a moment, and then we get that continuation to the downside. RSI is looking very weak. We did get up to the 50 and continue to fail at that level, which does make sense. If we do get a nice little pop above the 50 and then come back through the 50 on RSI, that would be a pretty good indicator that we're going to continue lower. And that would be very similar to what we saw here coming down from that August high. We came below the 50 and then came back through the 50. And that was really the more dramatic sell off. That would be something that I would be looking for here on this chart as well. Moving over to the dollar can see we got very, very overbought here on the dollar, on the monthly view, and we're selling off really dramatically. Continues to weaken here. It looks like we're going to be coming back down to that 21 EMA on the monthly view, which is down at about 99.50. Expect that to tick up a little bit next month, maybe down at 99 to 100 on the DXY. Momentum is fading here. You should expect this to continue down. RSI getting close to that 50 line. Might get a bounce at the 50, up slightly, and then a continuation through it. But yeah, definitely looks very weak on the dollar. Should certainly expect that to continue. Extending this trend line that we had early in the rally, you can see we are coming into that zone. Could certainly get that bounce and then a continuation through that level. If we do just go right through it here, you should expect that to get all the way down to the 21. And if we do see the dollar continue to break down here, that could be positive for stocks. So maybe we go straight through here, come back, retest, and then get that continuation. That would give stocks enough time to rally slightly. Dollar starts to move higher here giving stocks that bigger down move that we need. And then we get the continuation to the downside on the dollar, which could be a more permanent bottom for stocks. Moving over to junk bonds on the monthly view, you can see momentum to the downside is fading here slightly, but that's after this really large down move that we had. Seems like we are kind of bottoming in this area, although this month was quite weak for JNK. Certainly seems like we could come back down, retest these lows here, and then maybe find some sideways price action. Remember, these are very cheap prices. We're in the same levels that we saw during the great financial crisis here on JNK. And that's when there was a lot of risk of companies going bankrupt, which did happen to several of them. And I don't think we're quite in that same level of risk, but JNK here is trading at those same levels. You can see we did get oversold here on the monthly view, and we are starting to tick up despite being in the same price action. So that's a good indicator. JNK gaining some strength on RSI, fading on downward momentum, but in the similar price action here. So maybe we're coming back down, retesting, and then we could get that continuation here on JNK. And that should be good for growth and for the NASDAQ, which did underperform this year. Moving over to TLT on the monthly view, you can see this massive sell-off that we had all the way from $172 a share. Big pin up, actually got up to almost $180 before we sold off really dramatically all the way down to $136, bounced slightly, and then waterfalled all the way down to below $93 a share. And it seems like we may have bottomed at that level. Seems like we're coming back in to get maybe a double bottom probably a higher low in my opinion. And then hopefully we start to accelerate a little bit here to the upside on TLT. That would be good for stocks, potentially showing a little bit less risk in the markets. People think that owning assets and potentially equities definitely bonds is starting to be a profitable solution in terms of investing. But this is definitely a falling knife. 
see what looks like a bottoming formation. These prices go all the way back to August of 2010. And we did get even lower going back to February of 2011 down at these prices. Wiped out a ton of gains on TLT. Of course, you're getting dividends during this period. But TLT had been in a very strong market for quite a while. You can see that rally from November of 2018 all the way up to those June of 2020 highs. Over the next few months, I would like to see this bottom and start to create some more bullish price action. Moving over to the VIX on the weekly chart, the monthly chart doesn't do very much. We can take a look at that just for a moment. Not that effective in my opinion. These trends seem to be a little bit shorter term. It does give you some kind of highs and lows for reference. You can see down at 15 has been very cheap for the past few years. Up at 36, 37 has been quite high. We did have that really high spike during the COVID lows. You can see here 2018 was a very high spike. Then going back to the great financial crisis, got all the way up to 97, very, very high. And that ended up being very close to the bottom. And it trended downwards for the most part. We did have a decent spike here in 2011. But in terms of where we've been recently, the 144 EMA has been quite strong in terms of support down at 1867. Did come in, almost tested that once again for the bottom. And then you would expect this to accelerate back into 3536. But if we do start to take out those lows, maybe we get that bigger spike that everyone's been talking about into the 45 to 50 range. And potentially that is a longer term bottom that we can trade to the upside. Otherwise, on the daily chart, it does look like we came into resistance and we're going to be selling off here. I would expect this to move back down to about 20, giving stocks a little bit of room to rally over the next few days. And then we continue higher on the VIX, which does fit with my general thesis of a short term rally and then that greater sell off. If you want to know more about my positions, here they are. Definitely check out my video from Friday where I went into more detail on my thoughts on the shorter term charts. But otherwise, these are my positions, basically two covered calls and two puts going into Tuesday. Let me know down in the comment section what you think we're going to do over the next year or so and what you think those longer term charts mean about where we're going over the next few months. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.